Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. We are ready for our 10th lesson in Hebrew. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and give yourself a congratulations. Boy, we're doing really good today. We're going to start with a word of prayer as we get into Hebrew adjectives. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we thank you this morning on this Shabbat that you have given us as a gift. We thank you. It is Shabbat Ladonai, Shabbat Shabbaton, a Shabbat, a Sabbath for the Lord, and a Sabbath of complete rest. And Father, we thank you as we learn Lashon HaKodesh, the Holy Tongue. We pray you will give us the adjectives to be able to describe in Hebrew things, places, situations in our lives, and share the good news of the Gospel. We thank you, Lord God, that we can call the the new uh, the Greek apostolic scriptures the Brit Hadashah and that Hadashah means it's been renewed it's a renewal of covenant and Father we thank you for that renewing of our hearts today to receive the engrafted word in Yeshua's name we pray B'shem Yeshua Amen. Amen. All right, we're looking at a handout that I've given you on Hebrew adjectives. These adjectives can be used for any noun. The majority of the time you're going to have an adjective after the noun. And so it's kind of like Latin-based languages, like in Spanish, I would say Casa Blanca for White House. Um, I would say Blanca first. Like in English, you would say a million adjectives, the small, little, white, hairy dog. In, in, in Mediterranean languages, uh, languages of the Middle East, me languages of the Mediterranean, you would give the noun first, what you're talking about, and then give the adjective you describe it. So you would say the house is white. So in Hebrew, it could mean white house, or literally, house is white. So that's the way we'll take a look at nouns. So let's go ahead and just review our alphabet again, and we'll do the three times of our vowels, okay? Five letters at a time with a short break in between. Okay, one, two, three. Aleph, Bey, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Va, Zayn, Chet, Te, Yu, Ka, Lamed, Mem, Nu, Samech, Ein, Ke, Sadi, Ku, Resh, Shin, Ta. Tov Me'od. Very good. Let's go ahead and do our vowels three times through. And the A, E, I, O, and U is, is A, E, E, O, U. Let's do it. A, E, E, O, U. A, E, E, O, U. A, E, E, O, U. All right. So we have the A, E, I, O, and U. And sometimes Y as I, A, E, O, U. And so we won't review the, the consonant letters and the vowels. I'll just assume that you do uh, know them and that you practice them. Let's go to a very uh, important word on our list. And that is the Hebrew word gadol. Can you say gadol? Gadol. So here we have the word gadol. We have gimel. We have dalet. And we have above. And we have... Lamed. Okay, our vowel points will look like this, so that the vav becomes an o vowel with a dot on top, and then we have the kamatz, which is an a sound under the gimel. So we have gadol. Now this is a masculine um, ending for or, uh, or an adjective for a ma masculine noun. So let's think of a Hebrew word that you know that you want to make big. What's a Hebrew, what's a word you want to say in Hebrew that you want to enlarge it? Kohen. Very good, Kohen. So we have Kohen, which uh, it's like that. Kohen Gadol. So I take the word or noun Kohen or you, some of you know it as Kohen. It can be spelled Either way, sometimes in last names you'll see this name. And this means a priest. It's not a Catholic priest or an Episcopalian priest, but this is a Jewish priest, the priest of the temple, and previously before that, the tabernacle. And during these three weeks of mourning, many Jews don't shave uh, uh, very often unless there's a loss of wages for their job, or they will shave maybe on a Friday night before Shabbat starts and not shave during Shabbat. So I'm a little scruffy today, and forgive the scruffiness, but it's because of this concept of when we had priests, when we had a temple, um, there was rejoicing. When we don't have the priests, we don't have the temple, we don't have Jerusalem, there's a little bit of sadness. And the reason for these three weeks is because ever since the 17th of Tammuz, all the way to the 9th of Av, two Jewish months, around 
June and July. Um, there's a remembrance of all the tragedies that happened from those dates historically, not only the first time the temple was destroyed, but the second time the temple was destroyed, and other events even prior to the destruction of the temple. Like um, in relationship to the 12 spies and their negative report, breaching of Jerusalem, um, uh, the siege on Jerusalem by the Babylonians, and destruction by the Babylonians and the Romans at two different time periods. So there's a lot of events that happen within the Jewish world right now where you'll see Jewish men not shaving so much because they don't have the Kohen. They don't have the priests in operation. They don't have the temple. They don't have the joy of coming to, for the feast days. They don't have all the celebration. And even when a man gets married, as grateful as the joy is for the sound of the bridegroom and the bride and all the seven blessings that are pronounced, there is the breaking of a glass at the wedding to remind them of the destruction of the temple. That in the midst of our joy, we remember we don't have a temple. And without the temple, we cannot fulfill all the prophecies of the coming of the Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah. So there's a lot of things that go on, uh, and again, it's only tradition, but it's all based around remembering what God had commanded Israel in reference to the priesthood, okay? So if I want to refer to uh, not just a priest, not just a Kohen, but the Kohen Gadol, I'm referring to the big priest, or we would translate it as high priest. So this gets translated as high priest, okay? So what we're literally saying is he's the big man on campus. He is the big priest, okay? So we would use the word gadol. So you'll hear that a lot. Um, to make it feminine, for a feminine noun, you would actually do what we've done in a reference to um, the understanding of Sarah's name change. Remember her name went from Sarai to Sarah. And so from Sarai to Sarah, we have an ah sound added instead of the yud. So we learned about the ah sound. I'll go ahead and rewrite gadol again. I'm just going to leave it without vowels for now. And what we are going to add is the kamatz he. Okay? So all of a sudden, because we've added a third syllable, what, what's going to happen is a three-syllable word will usually need to, uh, there will be, need to be a reduction of one vowel. Because to have three vowels having equal timing is a little hard in Hebrew. You can't have that. So in the moment you go to three vowels, you need to reduce one of the vowels almost to uh, not even hearing it at all. And so we're going to use the very famous Shabbat. Everybody say Shabbat. 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 Now, usually under the first... Um, letter of a word, a shiva, usually reduces uh, a letter down to a short E sound. How do we pronounce E in Hebrew? E. e. Okay. So if I place the shiva here instead of the uh, kamatz, the moment I put a shiva, um, I'm reducing the sound down to almost non-existent so that I almost get the G and the D sounding together, but really there's going to be a very sh short S sound, okay? So I'm going to have a G with a short S sound here, okay? And then we're going to continue on with having the O vowel with, by using a vav, and then we're going to have, after the Lamed, a uh, A ah sound by cre creating with an A-H at the end, so here we have G-E-D-O-L-A-H. How do I pronounce this? If I have shortened this first vowel to almost non-existent, uh, and th these other two vowels are long vowels, that means these two are long, but this is the shortest possible vowel you can have. How am I going to pronounce that? Say it again. Okay, you're almost giving it an equal sound, but gedola is the sound of the vowels. Excuse me, gedola, 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 gedola. In other words, you have to shorten this E sound, the dola. It's like when we talked about tzedakah, it's really tzedakah uh, for the Israeli. Tzedakah. You can say tzedakah, but you almost need to reduce it as much as possible because this is the shortest possible E vowel you can have, and it's almost non-existent. It's just a very quick 
short S sound, which just gives you the normal sound of the letter G anyway. Because when you say the G sound, j, j, you have to add a, an E sound there. J, but just enough to get the, the, the G moving. J. Pronounce the G, you're going to... In Hebrew, this is not a J, but a G. G. So it's G. Gdola. Gdola. Hear the timing? Gdola are equal, but the G gets shortened. Gdola. Try that. Gdola. Mm -hmm. Gdola. You're just imagining that you're almost, you're almost trying to pronounce a G and a D together. Okay? Gdola. But that can either be written by a little apostrophe here to show that there's a shva between these two letters or by an E. Okay. So, um, any questions on the masculine feminine of the word big or large? What else could we What else could we use this for? Anybody else think of a, a different noun in Hebrew or a different concept you want to use for a word? What is a Jew, uh, um, What does an observant Jew wear first thing in the morning before he prays? What's one of the things he wears? A prayer shawl. No, um, a what? I can't think of the name of it. What's here? No, no. What is it? No, no. That's not what I'm referring to. What does a ju observant Jew wear before he prays? Because this is even before he puts on what you're thinking. Mm. The seat sleeve. Yeah, some form of head covering, right? There are two of them we could talk about. One biblical and one tradition. Which is the biblical one? The talit. The talit, or what's known as a prayer shawl, a talit, um, would be worn by a Jewish male. So here we have talit, either spelled with one I or two, doesn't matter. And normally, what you know as a prayer shawl is uh, a talit gadol. But I could also have a talit katan. That takes us to our next word. The talit katan is what many Jewish men wear underneath a shirt to be able to wear a four-cornered garment underneath their clothing that they can either t have the tassels hanging out or tuck them in, either way. Um, some males will wear them out publicly in Jewish communities. Some, because they go to a business or go into an unkosher place, they might tuck them in so as not to show I'm observant, but here I am going to an unkosher place so that it would be assumed that maybe I'm eating from that place. Even though I'm observant, they would rather tug it in because of the appearance of evil. It might look like maybe they're eating. Maybe they're delivering to that place because they work in a company that they deliver packages, but they would not eat from that place because they might serve unkosher food that they feel, uh, have a restriction of eating. Okay? So we have traditionally what you see us wearing on Shabbat morning is the talit gadol, which just means the big talit. The big four-cornered gar garment and the smaller one that you even see little young Israeli boys wearing and Jewish boys wearing, um, training them for their bar mitzvah, training them to wear what's on the talit gadol and talit katan, and that's what hanging from the corners of the garment. Tzitzit mm -hmm. tzit or tzitziot, which are the tassels or the fringes on the four-cornered garment. And that's based on what? Numbers 15, 37 through 41, and also Deuteronomy 22, 12, if you're looking for biblical backup there, okay? So we are able to use gadol for the kohen and gadol for the talit, okay? So how would I say priest? Kohen. How do I say high priest? Kohen gadol, okay? How would I say a, a talit that is large? Talit gadol. How about one that is small, worn under a uh, clothing, or sometimes even worn outside of the clothing? But talit katan. Now let's take katan, which is normally spelled this way. And vowels would look like this. Let's take it into feminine. What's, what have we learned about the feminine noun and adjective? What's usually the sound at the end of a feminine noun? 
uh -huh. ah sound. Okay. Uh -huh. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take katan and make it what? Katana. Okay. So we're going to have the same letters. In this case, since I'm going to add a letter to make the ah sound, I need to change the noon sofit, the final noon, back to a regular noon, and then add the hey. Because this is a final letter. Well, now it's no longer going to be a final letter. I have to revert it back to a normal letter noon. And then put the hey, and then what you're going to see under the noon is the kamats. So we know we're going to lose a vowel. And so we're going to have um, the vowels look like this. Ketana. Ketana. Okay. So the basic concept is bet between masculine and feminine adjectives, you're going to see the ah sound, the kamats he, at the end of a feminine adjective for a feminine noun. Okay. So how would a I say? First of all, let's say, how would I say a male student? I would say a male student. One male student. Okay. Let's see someone's Hebrew book. Let me see if there's a youth there. Every once in a while, I forget and try to go by memory, but. Set up right in Hebrew every day. There is a U there for the I. So we have Talmid. Okay, so this is one male student. How would I make it a female student? Talmida. Okay. Talmida. How would I say a small student, referring to a young? female student. Well, we're dealing with the female, right? <laughs> Talmida, because I said a young female student, right? So, I would have Talmida, but what would I do to say she was young or small? Ketana. Okay, so what we have here is tal mi da. Okay, tal na. Or I could do this to infer oh, the shaba is there. Tal mi da kitana. Okay, questions. Everybody see how that worked? Mm -hmm. Now, let's let's. Revert it back to male. Let's remove the kamate. I have talmid now. What's going to happen to the word small if I want to say a small male student? Katan. What do I need to do here? Take off the take off the hay and the kamats. What am I going to do for katan? Make it a regular noon instead of noon sophie. So we have. Noon so so feet here now. What about and this shva? To no. a, a, a Atah and kamats are we going to be our new vowels? So we have talmid katan, a small male student. So a teacher that has young students in the yeshiva or in a Torah academy, she he would have what talmid katan and a talmida katana. So adjective has to match the gender of the noun, just like in Spanish, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So, how would I say small boys in Spanish? Yeah. What would I use for boys? What would you use in Spanish for boys? Chico. You could say chicos. How about muchachos? Muchachos, okay. How would I say they're small? Pequeños. Pequeños is the word for small. Muchachos pequeños. Small boys. Yeah, I can use a variety of words, but those are the main words in Spanish for a small is pequeño. Okay? So it has to match. So in, in Spanish, you have the ah sound for the girl, just like in Hebrew. 
but you're going to have the O sound for the man. In this case, we have no vowel in Hebrew at all. Katan, there's no katano, right? Or katana. It's, it's katana for the, femi for the feminine, but it's katan for the male. So you're, with the same rule that you learn in Spanish, the masculine nouns end with an O. So if I say casa, what, what gender is it? Feminine. feminine. And that works majority of the time in Spanish. Every once in a while there's a confusion, like, how about mano? Is it masculine or feminine? Is it masculine? In Spanish is la mano, right? It's la mano. So there is an, there's a rule you learn in Spanish that every once in a while it doesn't work out. And that's because it was extracted from another language and added in, but then the concept is it, that it has a certain gender that it acquired from the other language. So every once in a while there's a confusion on, is it masculine or feminine? You might want to say el mano, but it's la mano. La mano de Dios, right? The hand of God. So it's not la, it's, it's, I mean, it's not el, it's la. So there is the same thing in Hebrew. There are certain times you just learn that there is, there's already a rule there that has to be overlooked. Or it's kind of like um, A, E, I, O, U, sometimes Y, or, you know, I before E except after C. We, we've created rhyming rules for people to remember so that when they get stuck in a situation, they say, well, which is it? They can go back to that little rhyming rule. Okay? So in Hebrew, I don't have any rhymes for you, but there is definitely certain rules that you learn. Okay? So here's katan for a masculine, and then katana for a feminine. Okay? Um, let's take a very important one. The, um, I'm going to skip the word for old, because nobody wants to be old here, right? And I'm going to go to new for time's sake. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and erase this, because this one really relates to messianic believers. Why? And also to Jews... And nations all over the world that understand Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Okay? So here we have, let's take the Hebrew noun for covenant. What's the word for covenant? No, what's the word for covenant? Karash. No, Karash. Brit. Okay? So we have Brit, or if you're Ashkenazi, you'd say a bris. <laughs> you have Brit here for covenant. Okay? So that would be like this. So let's make it a new covenant. Now, this is the only thing. You don't always know if something is masculine or feminine, yet in Hebrew. You haven't quite learned how to identify that. In this case, what's going to be an indication is this tav at the end sometimes is another indi indication that it's feminine. Like talit. Um, yeah, so it doesn't always work that way, but... Um, like Israelite is a, is a female Israelite. Israelite. First is Israeli. Israeli. Okay, would be Israeli. Israeli is Israeli. Okay, or Israeli male. But you hear eat at the end, right? And then becomes feminine. So it's a woman who's an Israeli. Yeah, well, see, you learn something new every day, especially when you come to Hebrew class. So because this is just going to be something you're going to learn, it's a feminine noun, it's a feminine noun, it's a feminine noun. Covenant is a feminine noun. It's something to be received versus an active force going out, which is masculine. So because it needs to be received, it's a feminine gender. Okay? Now, here we have breed, which is feminine, so let's make it a new covenant. How would I use um, the adjective, how would I say the adjective new if it's masculine? Okay, so we have Chadash, and I didn't hear enough chutzpah in there for you guys. How would you say it? Chadash. Chadash. I don't want you coughing up a lung like but you have to have a little bit of that sound in there. Okay, Chadash. Okay, so is this correct? Breed Chadash? No, because you have feminine first word in the and a masculine. So because we have a feminine gendered noun, breed, um, we need a feminine adjective. Mm -hmm. So how do we make it feminine? What's our rule? What are we going to have as that sound at the end? Uh, ah. Uh, how are we going to make the ah sound? Uh, kamatz he. Okay, so the kamatz underneath the last letter and followed by a he. This makes our ah, our ah sound. Okay. Uh. Chadash becomes Chadasha. 
So what, what we're going to do is we're going to shorten the ah sound here. In this case, we're going to use kamatz tef. Excuse me, um, the the patach uh, hatef, which is the ah sound reduced again by the shva, and um, and then we'll have the three syllables, not all of them of equal length, and we're going to keep the two uh, kamatz for the two ah sounds after that. So we have three ah sounds, and we would transliterate that. Ha, da, sha. So in this case, it's turned around, right? So you put chadasha here. So brit chadasha. So when you hear brit chadasha, you know it's it's literally this is a new covenant. To make it the new covenant, this is what happens. You add the prefix for the. What is the prefix for the word the? Ha. Ha. How do I do ha as a prefix? Add it to a letter. Prefix means it's prefixed or it's fixed to the beginning of the word. How do I add that? What letter do I add? A hey. So where am I going to put the hey though? Normally in English I'd say the new covenant, so I put the here. What describes this noun? What describes this noun covenant? What describes it? What is the describer here? Remember the adjective is a description. New, yes, new. What is the word we're using for new? Three. Okay. So does the further describe it? No. Let me ask the question again. Does the further describe? Yes, it does. This gave a generic def uh, description. Now we want to give a specific description. So we're going to add it to the description, not to the noun. Because the noun is being described by the adjective, so I need to add the the in front of the adjective that further describes the noun. Everybody follow me? I wouldn't add it to the noun because the noun doesn't get a description first. You tell me what we're talking about, then you describe it. So if you're going to further describe it, you put it on the description. Right? If I tell you, get right a piece, take a piece of paper and describe um, your speech. Write it down in a manuscript form. And I say, no, I need further explanation. I want you to put it back on that description. So you're not going to just say, well, I'll just talk it when I do my talk. I'll just say it. No, no, I want you to put it on the description that you wrote for me. So I want you to further write it on the same spot. So that's where you're going to put it. You're going to put it here. Greet Chachadasha. Greet Chachadasha. That is the new covenant. Prior to that, it was just a new covenant. In other words, we assume it's generic if there's no ha. If there's no hey in front of the, the adjective, we assume that it's generic. So what is ruach, ruach kodesh? Ruach kodesh. Is it? Is that, what is it again? What is ruach kodesh? What is it? The Holy Spirit. No, the, 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 you tell the me, Holy I'm asking you the question. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> what is it? We, we assume it's generic if there's no... Ruach is spirit. Okay. And Kodesh is holy. So what do you have to, what do you have to assume the in English? The. If we don't have the, then what do we assume spirit. instead? An indefinite article. Mm. Just a spirit. So if I have a dog versus the dog, what's the difference? Many dog. There's a lot of dogs. dogs. One specific dog. Well, let's talk English grammar. What's the difference between a dog and the dog? A dog, a dog is, is one. Else is one. No, let's talk English grammar. <laughs> the dog is a specific dog. The higher, higher. What's the other word we want to use as a specific? It starts with a D. Definitive? It's a word from definitive. It's a word from definition. What's the word? Define. Definite article. Definite article. I actually already gave you the answer. I just want to see if you're listening and retaining what I'm saying. What is the? It is a definite article. What is a? An indefinite article. If I say a house or a white house versus the white house, you. if I say a, find a white house, you're going to go down the street and find any white house that matches. If I say I want you to find the white house, you might go on in the internet, you might find a map, you're going to go to Washington, D.C., right, and show me the White House. Because the White House in America, right, mm -hmm. is the White House. It's definite. It has the in front of it. If there's no definite article, then it's just a White House. It's anybody's White House. 
correct? Mm -hmm. So it's the same way in Hebrew. If I have Brit Chadasha, that's just really what? A new covenant. So it's actually, when you say the blessing, you say Brit Chadasha. Now, for simplicity's sake, most people just say Brit Chadasha. That's what they say. But if you really want to be correct in Hebrew, and my Israeli Hebrew teacher would correct me every time that I would say the blessing without ha in front of it, ha in front of it. You know, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bakarbanu Mikol. No, that's Torah. Let's see which one's the Brit Hasha. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Natan Lanu Mishiach Yeshua. Then, Adavri, I can't do without the words. Would you say Brit Chachadasha? You can't say Brit Chachadasha. Okay. Who gave us a new covenant? No, he gave us the new covenant. Which one? The one Jeremiah was talking about. Because then you could think he was creating another covenant other than what the prophets were speaking of. See, with Hebrew, you have to be definitive. You have to define terms. And they want to know what are we talking about first? How do we define it? How do we describe it? Okay, we're going to stop with that. Well, how, would, how, many, how many would you like to do, how many of you would like to do this second half next week? Okay, so what I want you to do is marinate over these words here, try to learn them, and see if you can come up with a couple examples of picking a Hebrew noun that you've already learned, or the one you look up online, and using the appropriate masculine or feminine um, adjective. So that's your homework. Your homework is just on your notes, you don't have to turn it in, just to write on your notes at least one or two Hebrew nouns with the proper masculine or feminine adjective and use one of these. And then I'm going to ask you next week to share it and we'll put them on the board, okay? Let's close in prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we thank you today for blessing us with this Hebrew class. We pray that we will be able to use these, the language in such a way that we can communicate truth and communicate the, the gospel, especially the Bri HaChadasha. In Yeshua's name we pray. Yeshua, Amen. 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 God bless you this morning. Shabbat shalom.